the 2022 Phillies are going to be one of the more exciting teams in baseball. New additions like Trey Turner, like Gregory Soto, like Taiwan Walker, they're going to make this team, they're, they're going to put them over the top. One of the better, more contending teams in baseball like to spend a lot of money. Good acquisitions, but today, I, a Phillies fan, I'm going to be giving you my lineup predictions as well as a starting rotation and how I think the bullpen is going to be set up and pretty much what I would do. So let's get right into it. Okay, so we are here at the one through nine, the batting order. In the one slot, this is going to be debated. Should it be new acquisition, Trey Turner? Does Bryson Stott end up coming up and being in that role, which is really long term what's probably going to be happening? I say you stick with what you already had. I think Schwarber stays in the one, at least for until Harper comes back. Yes, he hit a lot of home runs. You might be thinking, we'll get more guys on base for him. Yeah, except for that when he hit those leadoff home runs, which he hit a ton of them last year, the team was right. So I think his energy, his spark with the leadoff home runs is really what's going to put the Phillies over the top. That being said, I think Turner's going to go in the two slot. Now I'm going to do this assuming Harper is healthy. So Turner in the two makes a lot of sense because you know he can run. Schwarber actually was like 12 of 13 on stolen base. He can kind of run a little bit. Big as of a guy as he is, he's efficient. Trey Turner, he's fast, he gets on base right ahead of the monster. When he comes back, I know it's going to be half the year, but Harper. And when he is out, I think JT goes in the three. I'm not going to keep him here, but just so that you know, if Harper's out, that's what it looks like top three. Harper's in, Harper's going to be hitting in the three. When Harper is out, I should say, it'll be Romuto, and I think Derek Hall is going to go in the four. Derek Hall was brought up last year just to be the cleanup hitter. He did a very good job of it, hit a lot of home runs, hit for a nice average, like 270, 280, somewhere around there. So Derek Hall was serviceable. But assuming that Bryce is going to be healthy at the all-star break, this is what it's going to look like, at least to me. Schwarber, Turner, Harper. In the four, I think this is where you have a lot of options. Personally... I would go with Reese Hoskins. Good power hitter, can clean the bases pretty well. Gets on base as well. He does walk a good amount. It's kind of what you wanted at the four hitter. A guy who walks right in front of him. A guy who gets on base has a machine right in front of him. I got another guy who walks right in front of him. And backing all them, it was going to be a monster catcher, JT Real Muto. Really good hitter. Let's say here, let's say this plays out. Schwarber, uh, we'll go with a, a fly out, because that's kind of what he does. Fly out, strike out, walk, home run. That's pretty much what it is. So let's say he flies out. Trey Turner, he gets on base. Harper draws a walk. Reese Hoskins will say, we'll say he strikes out as well because he strikes out a bit too. Dejan Romuto's got runners on first and second. He is clutch with runners on. That is a mm, just a good, perfect spot for him. I feel like if I'm predicting it, I think Castellanos is going to go in the six. He might even go in the five. That's not what I would do. I know you're paying him a lot of money, and you really shouldn't put anybody that much farther down. I think Alec Bohm should be hitting sixth. Do I think he's going to? No. I think he should, though. And I really love Stott in the seven hole, which really stinks. So I think for now, I'm going to put Bohm in the eight. Cassiano is going to go in the six. I think Cassiano is going to bounce back. I think he's going to have about 800 to 820 OPS. Nothing like he did in 2021, but 8 to 820, somewhere in there. Probably more like 20 to 25 homers. That's probably what he's going to be having. Bryson Stott, I think he's going to break out. If you see his numbers, they were weighted from the beginning of the year. Second half of the year when he started playing every single day, he was really good. That was 750 OPS for him in that time. Draws a good at bat. He can draw a walk too. He's about the most confusing at bat you can possibly see. He'll take two strikes right down the middle. I mean right down the middle. And then he'll work his way into a 10 pitch at bat where he either gets a double or walks. He does walk a bit too. Boom, I think that's the one piece of his game that doesn't need to improve is the walks. Marsh is going to come in at the nine. Very clearly, I think the weakest hitter on the team. Still fast, still can get on base. Philly's lineup is very deep. Dare call, we're going to put him in here because just for honorary. So Schwarber, I kind of want to change this. I really go back and forth. I don't think you really should change it. I think Schwarber, I think Schwarber is going to start opening day as in the leadoff. So let's say that we're going for opening day. Here's how I think it's going to go. With Harper out of the fold, he will not go off the screen for some reason. So, Real Muto's going to hit third. Dare call in the four. Hoskins, five. Think just like that. Not a lot of shuffling you have to do. I think that is exactly how you do it. Just like that. Schwarber, Turner, Real Muto, Hall. Hoskins, Castellano, Stop, Bo, Marsh. Harper's here because he does not want to leave. So, anyway, that's the lineup. I think that's how it's going to go opening day. When Harper comes back, like I, what I had it before, that's what I think. Coming over to the pitchers, so we got the ace, two, three, four, five, mid relief setup and closer. Phillies made some unbelievable improvements to the bullpen this offseason. Uh, they got a couple of really good young prospects coming up who are going to be starting pitching. 
Andrew Painter is a top 20 prospect in baseball right now, I'm pretty sure. And Mick Abel is top 60, I believe. He's, I think he's like 54 on the pipeline right now. Painter is better, and he's more MLB ready. Starting with the ace. Now, you really have ace A and ace B, so I am going to kind of rename this. Because you have two studs. I think Wheeler is probably... <sighs> They're going to start Nola opening day. It's just kind of what they do. So I'm going to kind of just do it that way. I think Nola is going to go to the top. And they just said today, Dombrowski said he wants to extend Nola. Hopefully he takes it. Wheeler is just a beast, man. Wheeler is the guy who dominates you with the with the velocity. Nola's the guy who dominates you by painting it. Oh my gosh, that comeback sinker is... Mm number three i've got ranger suarez i think his numbers are going to climb this year because of the improved defense that they have stock going back to his natural position a good athlete out there and trey turner this is a guy who induces a lot of ground balls and i think that his numbers are going to actually improve banning of the shift yeah you can argue that they're going to be worse i think with the improved defense you're going to see him bounce back to about a three maybe even sub three era a year ago he had a sub two he racked up like six war a year ago in the four it's gonna be taiwan walker and you might be saying yeah it's a lot of money for a number four slot this is kind of what he is kind of what he was in the new york in new york it's kind of where he thrived this is a guy who's very first half heavy hopefully you know caleb cotham pitching staff can see something in him that they can change make him better long term got him for four years so we'll see how that one plays out in the five i'm gonna go with painter i'm sorry i don't have like a you know a png picture i think painter is the pretty obvious choice over Abel. And they don't really have another starter in the on the roster right now. So your number five really is going to have to be, unless you go with Bailey Falter, which I don't have on this list. I apologize. I think Painter, you should start to get him innings. And I think in the number five slot, I think that's where you should go. I mean, man, if you're a top 20 prospect, you should be ready to go, man. Hunter Green is very similar. Not They don't pitch similarly. It's just like, you know, Hunter Green was a top 20 prospect, came up, started pitching, was really good. Mid-relief. I think you're going to see some guys like, I apologize, Derek Hall and JT Romuto are not supposed to be on this list. If Mick Abel comes up, he's going to be in the mid-relief. He is a little bit worse, so I think he's going to need a little bit more time to develop. Craig Kimbrell is definitely a guy you could see in mid-relief. I, I don't know if you're going to be putting him in 7th, 8th, definitely not the ninth inning. I think you brought him in to be a one inning guy for sure, but him to pitch your six on a day where Ranger Suarez goes five, you know, two runs. I uh, Sam Coonrod's coming back. This guy throws gas, by the way. He's probably gonna go mid relief just because of how many back end guys this team has. And the very much improved pitching game by Connor Brogdon. Playoffs, he really showed his worth, man. And even before that, he got better and better and better as the season went along. His seventh inning, even his eighth inning, was so good for the Phillies. He had an ERA in the twos. You're going to see Jose Alvarado probably stay in this. And in the playoffs, was not, not great. He got sent down like probably a third of the way through the year last year. Came back, was really good. Rest of the regular season, he was lights out. However, he got to the postseason. He had a lot of pressure on him. And he'd been in the postseason before, but... You know, he just wasn't good. He let that home run to Jordan Alvarez in the World Series. Same with Zach Eflin. This was not very good in the bullpen, especially in the playoffs. Regardless, Jose Alvarado is probably going to be in the setup still. He'll probably pitch your seventh. I don't think you're eighth. I think you really hand your eighth to Brogdon. Brogdon is really good. And as Rob Thompson does, you know, I and here's the thing. Rob Thompson does not assign jobs to guys, which is why, like, I don't really think this is going to really happen. You know, other than like the one, two, three, four, five, the, his bullpen is really managed as based on matchups. He doesn't really do like, okay, you're our closer, you know? Sir Anthony did become that. I think he's going to be in that closer role. However, the addition of Gregory Soto, I think they're going to dual close. This team's going to win a lot of games. They're going to win a lot of games where they're going to need to pitch to close it out. I think this dual threat with Greg Soto and Sir Anthony Dominguez is disgusting. That is how I think the pitching is going to be shaped up. If you didn't remember before, when Harper is out, this is how I think the lineup's going to be out. So opening day, I think you're going to see Nola pitching. I think if you get to the end, I think you're going to see Sir Anthony Dominguez rather than uh, Greg Soto. Probably Alvarado, maybe even a Kimbrel. Depends on how deep Nola goes, obviously, but this is, I think, legitimately, I do think this is how the lineup's going to be looking. I want to know what you guys think, though, in the comments below. Uh, if you're a Phillies fan, let me know. I want I want to know your thoughts on where Nick Cassianos especially should bat. I think six is probably good for him. Maybe the five. It really depends on how much he improves. Might move up more and more as the season goes along. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.